Hi, my name is Hiro Ino, and I'm the uh, product line manager for our Hyperbus memory products. So this is a series of uh, videos that we'll be um, taking in terms of uh, Hyperbus and the products that use uh, the interface. So today, let me talk about Hyperbus and how it came to be. Uh, Spansion is uh, well known in the automotive industry, and we have had challenges from customers requesting for very high performance yet very low pin count. The more pin count you have, the more reliability concerns you have. So the challenge that was given to us by our customers was that we want a very high performance product with minimal pin count. And that's how um, Hyperbus came to be. It's a very novel solution. Uh, it's a very fast and general purpose solution. And uh, yeah, you'll see um, from now. So this is a block diagram of the Hyperbus interface. We see on the left-hand side is the memory device. It could be a memory or peripheral. As I mentioned earlier, it's a general purpose bus, so it doesn't have to be a memory. It could be any other kind of peripheral that wants to attach to it. On the right-hand side, you see a system on chip or a microcontroller, essentially the host. So the Hyperbus interface consists of 12 pins and it has a chip select from the top, 8-bit I.O. bus, a differential clock, and a read data strobe. So the 8-bit I.O. bus runs up to 166 megahertz at DDR. And uh, the RDS, it stands for read data strobe. This allows the host to capture data in an accurate fashion. So this is an output signal coming from the memory to the host. So again, it's one 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 pin uh, bus to transact data. And uh, let me talk about the benefits of the Hyperbus. We see here on the x-axis is um, a category of devices that are in the market today. On the y-axis you see the throughput of these devices in megabyte per second. So at the very left you see the page mode parallel NOR. Um, this is the standard memory bus interface where you have an address bus and a data bus. And uh, because of that, the pin count is extremely large. For a 1 gigabit device, it's approximately 45 pins. The throughput of this device, of course, because it's a, a wide bus, is, uh, is a superior. So it, for a expansion device, it goes up to 96 megabyte per second. We see next is a spy device. It's a single channel spy device consists of four pins for transactions. So the pin count is low, however the performance is low as well. Um, it's in the order of 10 megabyte per second. The um, ordinary DDR quad spy that exists today in the market uh, is now six pins. You have four channels of SPI and goes up to 66 megabyte per second or somewhere in that range. For Spansons DDR quad spy with the daylight earning pattern feature can go up to 80 megabyte per second. You see at the very right, this is the Hyperbus interface. And compared to all the other solutions, you can see it's, it's extremely fast. It goes up to 333 megabyte per second with only an incremental increase in pin count. With only 12 pins, you can take five times performance of a regular quad SPI device. So um, in the next video, we'll talk about HyperFlash, which uses the Hyperbus interface.